Welcome to The Daily Show. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for writing what is one of the most interesting books I've read on feminism in a very long time. Hood Feminism is a really interesting title, because some people might be like, is, is there a different type of feminism in the hood that we, we don't know about? I think that there is. I, I would argue that feminism in the hood is really about survival and less about becoming CEO and more about becoming, you know, a person who can afford to keep your house stay home for two weeks during coronavirus and generally feed your kids through that process. Right. It's, it's interesting that you say that because many people have said that the term fem feminism itself is starting to lose its, its uh, I guess, its power because everyone has a different definition of what it means. Uh, you know, some have accused certain waves of the feminist movement of leaving black women behind. Some people have said that feminism itself, um, mainstream feminism, doesn't think about all of the additional factors facing certain people. What do you think needs to improve? What is hood feminism if you think about applying it to everybody? I think about it this way. If we made sure that everyone who is currently on the margins is centered in our work and we make sure that they've got housing, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Housing, food, health care. Um, we make sure that people have access to education and opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's a better world for everyone, right? So your answer for we want to reduce crime, well, make sure people don't have a reason to be criminals. Right. We want to reduce the spread of the coronavirus. Make sure people can stay home for two weeks and be paid a living wage. Right. And be able to access groceries and medical care and all of these things. Like, every answer basically boils down to if we're going to do feminism for all women, we have to make sure that the poorest women have everything they need to survive. You can't fight for your rights if you can barely stay alive. It's interesting that you, you bring that up in the book in a completely different way, because you talk about it from a personal perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you talk about it as it, as, it, as it affects people today. How did your life define how you think about feminism? So I was raised by my grandmother, and I was one of those kids who we would now casually say was at risk, right? And it was fine. I, I didn't, you know, go to jail or any of those things, but I married a guy who was not great. Right. And then I got a divorce. And one of the fun things about getting a divorce when you've left an abusive relationship and you don't have any money as a single parent is that you find out really quick whether or not you have a safety net. Wow. Right? So I lived in the projects. I went to college. I was, I'm a U.S. vet. Mm -hmm. So I went to college while living in the projects and raising my son. My ex-husband didn't pay child support, yada, yada. So there was food stamps and Medicaid and all of those things. I was one of those people we always see talked about as, you know, someone who's siphoning from the system. Right. Except I had paid into the system. I got help from the system, and I promise you, I pay more in taxes now than I ever got. That's a great... I mean, that's a great success story. It's wonderful that you, 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 you came from that place to this place. But it's also interesting that you, you don't stop looking back and going, like, I'm lucky. Because I... Here's the thing. If you say, well, I made it out... No, it's just me. Everybody else has to make it, too. Mm -hmm. You sort of ignore the people who, A, who helped you make it out. Right. And, B, you just keep the problem going. There was always another girl like me. There was always another parent like me. There was always another person who was struggling. And we honestly do ourselves no favors when we don't take care of people right. who need a hand up, right? And it really is. We love a bootstrap in America. Bootstraps are stupid. No one can pull themselves up by their bootstraps, <laughs> right? That's never happened. I want you to grab your shoelace and try and pull yourself up. And right. other than breaking your shoelace, <laughs> you get nowhere. So what, what people do get help from, right, is lift as we climb reach back and help someone. Uh -huh. And the next one, each one teach one is another saying that from like the 80s, I don't know if it's still a thing. But as you move forward and bring people with you, everything gets better. How does this apply specifically to feminism, though? Because someone might read this book and say, well, Mickey, everything you're saying here just seems like a, a, a progressive platform, you know, health care and, 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 and job opportunities and, and, you know, paid maternity leave, et cetera. How are these things specifically aimed at feminism? Why do you think we have to think of those policies or ideas specifically through a feminist lens? Because if we're going to write policy that says... If we're going to look at a movement that says it's for all women, but that movement's work only focuses on a particular group of women and ignores everyone else. Mm -hmm. Well, fun fact, you may have noticed that this last election cycle, we had a 53% number because we hadn't talked about race and class and women, right? White women will vote based on race more than they will vote based on gender. Shout out to Elizabeth Warren, who just learned that lesson. So therefore, when we talk about feminism and, and we talk about women, we have to talk about all women. And issues that affect all women, not just issues that affect some women, should be the focus. I'm never going to be a CEO. Well, I guess I could be. I really try. <laughs> I can do anything else. I like but... how quickly you changed your perspective on life. <laughs> In a, you had, like, the it. two boys. I'm never going to be... I can do it. <laughs> I mean, I think I can do anything if I put my mind right. to it. 
But I do also recognize there's what, 100 or 300 women CEOs in America at mm -hmm. any given point, mm -hmm. right? How many CEOs do we need versus how many nurses, teachers, doctors, right. moms, so, all of these things? So do you think then, you know, because when I read through the book, what was interesting as an argument and an, and an idea was that a lot of feminism seems to have been focused around, like, powerful positions only. You know, people have gone like, we need more women CEOs, we need more women in power, we need more women in re ruling and doing this, which we do need. But in addition to that, you argue that many f waves of feminism have left out just women in general and what they need to just survive. Yes, because when we look at the world, right, most women were 51% of the world's population, or around that, that percentage for the U.S. How many are the 99% and how many are the 1%? How many women are going to be living at or below the poverty line? Mm -hmm. Even if you're quote unquote middle class and you're making, let's say, $50,000 a year, I think the, la the latest round of math for New York is that a living wage in New York is something like $100,000 a year, between 80 and 100. So you're still low income in New York, even if you're not low income in right. Kansas right. or whatever. Relatively, you're still low Relative, income. Relative, right. Yes. So if you're looking at these things and you're saying, well, I don't know how you're supposed to be able to pay these bills and blah, 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 but that woman is going to be CEO, so maybe she'll fix it, but she's still paying her employees $15 an hour or less. Did the woman in power help anyone, or did she just get some power? So feminism has to look at the women who have power and also at the women who need to be able to survive, because if we want all women to do better, if we want a movement that is for all women, we need to meet the needs of every woman as best as we can. It's a powerful statement that makes sense, which means a lot of people are gonna hate it. I loved it, though. Thank you so much for being on the show. A really wonderful book that looks at feminism in a completely different way. Good Feminism is available now. Mickey Candle, everybody.